Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in Lian Lee's brand new O11 Dynamic Evo. And on first looks, you might be thinking this case looks very similar to the original O11 Dynamic, but it is a completely redesigned case with a whole host of new features. And I'm going to be covering all those new features in detail in this video. But to give you a little bit of an idea, I'm going to list four of them now. So firstly, the case is bigger, so you're going to be able to fit more in it. You're going to be able to change out the front glass panel for a mesh panel. You can mount your GPU in an upright position, and you can actually invert the whole case. So four very exciting features, but there is a whole lot more, and I'll be covering them all in real detail in this video. So let's start off by taking a look at the other parts I've chosen for today's build. For the motherboard, I'm going to be using the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero, and I've already done an overview of this motherboard, and if you want to find out more about it, you'll find a link to that video in the description. For the CPU, I'm going to be using one of Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs, it's the 12700K. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got a 360mm AIO from ASUS, it's the ROG Ryugan 2. For RAM, I'm going to be using one of Kingston's brand new DDR5 kits, and I've got 32GB of Fury Beast at 5200MHz. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 4 M.2 SSD for this build. It's from Sabrent, and it's their blistering fast Rocket 4 Plus drive in 2TB capacity. The graphics card I'm using today is also from ASUS. It's the ROG Strix RTX 3080. Powering the whole build, I'm going to be using the Montex Century 850W fully modular power supply. For case fans, I'm going to be using all Lian Li Uni fans, and the model I'm using is the SL120s in white. As well today, I've got two of the five optional accessories for the O11 Dynamic Evo. The first is the mesh front panel kit, and the second is the upright GPU bracket. The three optional accessories that I won't be showing you today are the vertical GPU bracket, because I think you'll agree with me, mounting our graphics card upright sounds far more exciting. You can also replace part of the top panel, which has I.O. in it, so that's going to allow you to move your I.O. to the top. And there's also an additional I.O. module, so you can actually double the external I.O. in the case should you wish to do so. The final part for today's build is some white cable extensions from CableMod. So that's all the parts. Let's get on with the build. The first thing I want to do is to prepare our case, and as we go, I'll point out the main case features. So the first thing that's new with the O11 Dynamic Evo is we can actually remove the side and front panel without removing the top panel. So all we need to do is simply pull the panel forward at the top, and then we can just lift it away. Same thing with our front panel, pull it forward and lift away. Taking a look at our top panel, you'll now see it's got an integrated mesh layer. To remove it, we just need to loosen the thumb screws at the back, slide it backwards and lift away. Again, our other side panel features two integrated mesh layers. To remove it again, we just need to pull it out from the top and lift away. Taking a closer look at the case, you'll see Leanne Lee have stuck with the same dual chamber design, and we'll take a closer look at the front chamber first of all. So in terms of motherboard support, we can fit up to AITX motherboards. You'll see we've got eight horizontal PCI expansion slots, and we're going to have no trouble fitting a large graphics card with cards up to 422mm in length being supported. If you want to mount your graphics card vertically in the case, Lian Lee's vertical graphics card kit can be mounted in two different positions, allowing extra height below the graphics card for thicker fans and a radiator. Um, as well, you'll be pleased to know it's a Gen 4 cable that it comes with. In terms of fan support, at the bottom, the top and the side, we can fit either three 120 or two 140mm fans. And if you go with the optional front mesh kit, we can fit another 2140 or 3120 millimeter fans at the front as well. It's also good to see that we now have a rear fan mounting location and we can fit a 120 millimeter fan at the rear. In terms of radiator support, both at the top and at the side, we can fit either a 360 or a 280 millimeter radiator, while at the bottom we can fit a 360 millimeter radiator. Something else new is that we've got removable fan stroke radiator brackets at the bottom, the side and the top, so we'll go ahead and get these removed. To remove the bottom radiator bracket, we just simply need to remove the thumb screw, then we can slide the bracket and lift it away. So if we take a closer look at the bracket we've just removed, you'll see we do have some mounting locations for drives. So we can fit either two 3.5 inch drives or four 2.5 inch drives to this bracket. The only thing to be aware of is if you're going to fit drives to this bracket, you're not going to be able to mount fans at the bottom. And from my previous tests, I have found that fans at the bottom significantly improve our GPU temperatures. To remove the top fan bracket, we first need to remove these two screws. 
With the screws removed, we can simply slide the placard backwards and lift it away. At the top of the case, we've got some screw holes, which is going to give you the option of securing both the tempered glass panels in place, preventing them from being removed. Our side fan bracket is removed by simply lifting this quick release clip and sliding it out. Now, one of the nice things is this bracket is reversible, so we can insert it the other way round. And then it's just a matter of pushing it in and the quick release clip will secure it. So the advantage of this is the mounting points are then further towards the back of the case, which is useful if you want to use a particularly thick radiator and fans on the front. To remove the cable management bracket, we just need to loosen the thumb screws at the top and the bottom. Um, on this bracket, you are able to mount two two and a half inch drives. With the cable management bracket removed, you can see the improvements Lee and Lee have made to the cable management in this case. So we've got these additional clips which are going to help organise the cables. We've got some Velcro cable straps and we've got this additional bracket here. The idea of it is the cables go into your drives, you wrap around the bracket. So then when you're doing your cable management, you're not going to pull them out off the drives. Our power supply is going to go down the bottom here and we've got a support bracket here for it. To access the hard drive cage, we need to simply remove the cover by lifting the thumb screw and lifting away. Then we can go ahead and remove the drive trays. The hard drive cage is removable. We've got four screws holding it in place. So taking a closer look at the hard drive cage, in each of our drive trays we can mount either a 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drive. There is also the option to mount a 2.5 inch drive to the outside of the hard drive cage as well. The other thing you'll notice if you look at the hard drive cage is we do have some fan mounting locations for a 60mm fan. So there's two on each side of the drive cage and Lee and Lee include four long screws to mount the fans to the drive cage. With the hard drive cage removed, one of the options we have is to go with dual power supplies. So we can go ahead and slide our first power supply into place. Then Lee and Lee include this little rubber block which you would stick to your first power supply. And then you can go ahead and put a second power supply into place. And you're going to be able to screw both into the back. The other option that we have is to put our hard drive cage at the bottom and power supply at the top. So I'll show you how to do that. The first thing we need to do is remove this power supply support bracket. To remove this bracket, we're going to have to take the bottom of the case off. But before we can do that, we're going to have to free up all these I.O. cables and bring them out the bottom. We can now go ahead and loosen the thumb screws at the back of the case and then simply pull this backwards and the bottom of the case will come off. We can now see the two screws we're looking to remove. And with the screws removed, the power supply support bracket simply lifts away. The first thing to do is secure the power supply support bracket to the hard drive cage. And the four screws come in the accessory box. Then we can go ahead and secure the hard drive cage to the case using the four original screws. Then we're going to need to relocate this bracket to the bottom. It's held on with three screws. Okay, so now we're able to slide our power supply in at the top. And we've got the bracket here to help organise the cables coming out of the hard drive cage. Next thing I want to do is take a look at the buttons on the case. So we've got a power button which can be pressed both from the front and from the side, which is a really nice touch. We've got a reset button here. And then we've got two lighting buttons. One is for mode and one is for colour. And if we take a look at the front of the case where the glass is removed, we've got an LED lighting strip all the way down the front. Take a look at our case's front I.O. We've got a combined headphone and microphone jack. We've got two USB type A ports and a type C port. Now, one of the nice things about this module is you can actually move it. By default, it's installed at the front, but we do have the options to install it on either side. And I'll show you how to do that now. So this is our I.O. module installed at the bottom of the case. So to free it up, we just need to pull this lever up and then we can push down to free the module. I'm just going to bring a little bit more cable through to the bottom. And then all we need to do is slide the module down to the bottom of the case. There's little notches in it and push it into place. And that's what that looks like now with the I.O. on the side of the case. There is also the option to install the I.O. module on the other side. To do that, I'm going to have to loosen this little clip. I'm then going to free up the module. So we pull this clip back and push over. We can then go ahead and relocate it over here. Push into place. 
and then there's a little hole here to relocate the clip. So that's what it looks like installed on the other side. Um, if you can't make your mind up, you can go with more than one location because Lee and Lee do sell additional I.O. modules so you can improve the front I.O. on your case by adding two of these. The other option that Lee and Lee offer is a replacement panel for the top of the case with a cutout for the I.O. So you would simply remove this panel by loosening the thumb screw at the back and sliding it away. You would slide your new panel in. Unfortunately, I don't have one of these. It would then have the cutout and you'd be able to bring your I.O. cables up here and install them at the cutout so you'd have your I.O. on the top of the case. Then, just before we leave the bottom of the case, this is where you'll find the case's one and only dust filter, and it is magnetic. The next thing I want to do is show you how to invert the case. So we've already removed all the panels, the radiator brackets at the top, the bottom, and the side, and also the cable cover. So we've also to remove this bracket at the top. We just loosen the thumb screw and pull it backwards and away. We can go ahead and remove the hard drive cage, just exactly how we've done it before. Bring all our I.O. cables through to the bottom of the case. Go ahead and loosen up the thumb screws. And then remove the feet at the bottom. We can remove the screws securing the power supply support bracket. Then we can go ahead and put the case back onto the feet upside down. And then tighten up the thumb screws at the back. We can go ahead and loosen the clip securing the I.O. cables. Pass our cables up and through to the back. We can go ahead and secure the power supply support bracket to the hard drive cage. So I've gone ahead and removed the tempered glass panel to give you an idea of what this looks like. So your motherboard is going to be installed upside down. Your graphics card is going to be at the top of the case upside down as well, but the big difference is the front and back have been reversed. So this is going to be perfect if you want to sit this on the left hand side of your desk because you're now going to be able to see the front of the case and the side. So I'm not going to use this layout today. I think I'm almost certainly going to do an inverted build in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and put things back the way it came. So just in case you want to install your graphics card horizontally, I'm going to show you how the support bracket works. So you would go ahead and install your motherboard, obviously I haven't done it, um, but you wouldn't install the screw here and here. Instead what you're going to do is use this long standoff that comes with a support kit to, to secure your motherboard in place. And again the tool for securing the standoff in place it comes in the accessory kit. Pretend our motherboard's in here, it's being secured with these longer standoffs and then we want to put this little bracket into place and secure it with the same screws we've used to secure the motherboard in all these other locations. Then we've got one of these little brackets that's going to hold our graphics card up. We're going to line it up to where we think it goes and then secure it with a screw. I'm just going to leave that secured lightly for now. We've got these little sticky rubber pads. There's double-sided adhesive on it. So we'll go ahead and stick it into place and it's just going to make sure you don't damage your graphics card. Then once you've installed your graphics card into place, you're going to push this up into the right position and go ahead and tighten it into place. And you can see that's going to provide quite a bit of support for the graphics card. And we get two of these clips should you wish to go for a dual graphics card system. The next thing for us to do is to go ahead and mount this bracket to the side of the case. There's two reasons you're going to need to use this bracket. The first is if you need additional SSD or hard drive mounted locations and you can mount two three and a half inch drives or four two and a half inch drives to the back of this bracket. The other reason you may want to use it if you're wanting to mount your graphics card in the upright position like we are. So importantly if you want to install drives go ahead and install them on the back before installing this into the case. So we'll go ahead and slide it into place and then push in at the back. Next we can go ahead and line the bracket that comes with the upright GPU kit up with the holes at the top of the case and screw it into place with four screws. Next we need to assemble this little bracket together so we're going to line this up and put a screw in at the back. Then we've got a little sticky pad we can go ahead and put on the front. We can then go ahead and line the bracket up with the back of the case now I've already sized it up and then we'll screw it into place. Next we can go ahead and loosen the two screws at the top of the bracket and then we should be able just to slide this out. 
We can then go ahead and insert the graphics card into the bracket and then secure it into place with the screws from the accessory box. Just before we install our graphics card, we need to plug in either the display port or HDMI cable, whatever we're going to use, and pass the cable through to the back. Then we can go ahead and insert the graphics card into the bracket. And we're going to secure the bracket into place at the back with the two screws we removed. At the back of the case, we can go ahead and bring our HDMI cable out this rubber grommet at the back. Then we can go ahead and slide the other bracket. I've already put the little rubber protector on. Slide it down past the graphics card and then we'll secure it into place with a screw. Now, just taking a look at where that's coming out, that is actually slightly blocking our PCIe cables. So I'm just gonna to need to move it down a little bit. So I'm gonna loosen this clip first of all. Loosen the screws at the back. Then we'll slide the bracket down to where it's free of our PCIe clips. Yep, all the way down there should be fine. Tighten it up again. So that's our graphics card nice and secure. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and remove the graphics card but keep all the other brackets in place. Next, because I'm using the optional front mesh panel, we're going to need to put the brackets on for our fans. So we'll go ahead and line the brackets up with the holes on the case and secure them into place. The second bracket can go in two different locations. If we're going to install 120 millimeter fans, we need to line it up with this hole. If we want to go a 140 millimeter fans, it's this hole. We're going to go with 120, so I'm going to bring it back to here. Then it's just a simple matter of pushing our front mesh panel into place. We are now ready to start working the motherboard, and we're going to install our CPU, the bracket for our CPU cutter, our M.2 SSD, and our RAM, all before we put the motherboard into the case. Okay, so to open our socket, we just need to push this little clip backwards and outwards, lift it up, and then we can lift this up to expose our socket. Next, we can go ahead and drop our CPU into the socket, making sure the text is the right way up. Then we can go ahead and close the cover over. If we apply a little bit of pressure over to the left-hand side, the black plate of plastic will pop off. And then we can go ahead and close the lever, securing our CPU. Next, we're ready to install our M.2 SSD, and I'm going to go ahead and install it in this top socket. Just before we go ahead and put our drive into the socket, we can remove the plastic protection. Then we can go ahead and insert our drive into the socket at a slight angle. Once we're happy it's in place, we can flatten it down and use this catch to hold it in place. Again, before returning the heatsink, it's important we remove the plastic protection. We're now ready to install our RAM. Because we've only got two sticks, we're going to need to install it in the second and fourth one along from the CPU. So I'll go ahead and open those clips. Then we can go ahead and line our RAM up with the slot. Once we're happy, everything is lined up and in place. It's just some firm pressure to the top, and the RAM is going to clip into place. Same thing with our second stick. Line it up. Again, once we're happy, everything's in place. Some firm pressure to the top, and the RAM is going to clip into place. We are now ready to install the bracket for our CPU cutter, but if you look closely at the mounting holes, you'll notice that actually two mounting holes at each corner joined together. One of them is for LJ1700, but one of the cool things is they're doing with their motherboards is they're making them backward compatibility by also including holes for LGA1200. And this is really useful for us because the cutter we're going to use doesn't come with an LGA1700 mounting bracket. So we're going to be able to use the LGA1200 holes to mount our cutter. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put our cutter's back plate through the holes at the back. And then we need to screw one of these brackets into each corner. Okay, so we're now ready to go ahead and insert our motherboard into the case. So we'll go ahead and get it lined up with a cutout at the back. You'll notice I've removed the M.2 SSD cover, and that's because we need to access the middle screw in the motherboard. We'll go ahead and get the motherboard secured to the case using the screws from the accessory bag. Next thing to do is to get all our case cables plugged in, so we'll go ahead and plug these in one at a time. Okay, first cable to plug in is our HD audio cable. It's going to go in this header down the far left-hand side of the motherboard. 
we're going to use all the pins over to the left hand side and not the two pins to the right hand side of the socket. Importantly there is a pin missing and there's a hole missing on our header so it's important we line it up the right way. Okay so we'll go ahead and plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. And then pull the excess cable through to the back. Our case is some LED lighting on the front and we've got a standard 3 pin 5 volt RGB connector to plug into our motherboard. So two headers along we've got one of those. Going to line it up make sure it goes the right way and push into place and then again pull the excess cable through to the back. Our front panel header is this one over at the far right hand side of the motherboard. Lee and Lee has done a great job of combining all the headers into a single plug. Some other cases these all come as separate headers you need to plug into the individual pins. So we're just going to go ahead and line it up with a header with the front panel text facing up the way and push into place and then pull the excess cable through to the back. Next we've got our USB 3.0 header. We've got one here and one here. So we'll go ahead and bring the cable through the cutout. Line it up with the header and push into place and then bring the excess cable through to the back. Next we've got our front panel Type-C connector so we'll go ahead and bring the header through the cutout. Line it up with the header. Push into place and then pull the excess cable through to the back. We're now ready to go ahead and get our power supply installed and I've gone ahead and plugged all the cables into our power supply already. So I've got a 24 pin cable for our motherboard, two 8 pin EPS cables to provide additional power to our CPU. I plugged in three PCIe cables and I plugged in a SATA cable. Although we're not installing any SATA drives we are going to need SATA power for the hubs that we're going to use in this build. As well I plugged the white cable extensions into the end of the cables. So just before we insert the power supply I'm going to apply a little rubber pad to our power supply support bracket. Then we can go ahead and lift the power supply into the case. And then we'll get it secured into place at the back with screws from the accessory bag. We're now ready to get our power supply cables in, so our two 8-pin EPS cables are going to go into this header here, the top left of the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and bring them through the cutout at the top, line them up with the header, push into place. Same thing with our other cable. And then we have got some cable combs in these cables to help tidy up the cables. Next we can go ahead and bring our 24 pin cable through the cutout. We'll go ahead and line it up with the header, push into place. So I've gone ahead and slid the graphics card into the top here and I actually think this is what I'm going to install next. If we were to put our AIO at the top it might be more difficult to install our graphics card. Um, and I think actually installing this PCIe riser cable is going to be a little bit tricky. So I'd rather have it done before I put anything else into the build. The other thing I'm looking at is our PCIe power cables are going to go in here. And we're not actually going to see them. They're going to be routed from here along behind the back of the graphics card and into here. So what I'm actually thinking I'm going to do, this cable is going to be really thick and difficult to route. So I'm actually not going to use the white cable extensions for the graphics card. Okay, so I'm going to bring the graphics card out again. Okay, first thing to do is get our riser cable plugged into the graphics card. So we'll go ahead and line it up and then apply a little bit of pressure. And that's it clipped into place and our clip has closed. Next we can go ahead and slide our graphics card into the bracket. That's it all the way to the back. And then we'll get the graphics card secured into place at the top. I'm going to go ahead and bring my HDMI cable through and plug it into the graphics card. Next I'm going to bring our PCIe power cables through the cutout at the bottom. And then we'll go ahead and get them plugged into the graphics card. And that's the third one plugged in. So we can go ahead and tuck these cables down to the side. And then we can pull all the excess cable through to the back. At this stage then we're going to be able to resecure the clip supporting the graphics card at the front. We're now ready to go ahead and install our riser cable into the motherboard and this gives me a really good opportunity to point out a really cool feature of this motherboard. Normally to open the clip you would just press here to open it. But for example if you had a big graphics card installed here in an cooler, you might not be able to reach this clip. So this is why I just have added this little button. If I go and press it and watch the clip you'll notice it opens the clip. So really really clever. So we'll go ahead and get our riser cable plugged in. Line it up with a slot. Once we're happy it's lined up we'll apply a little bit of pressure. It's going to push into place and the clip is going to close. Then we need to just organize the cable with some included cable ties. 
we're now ready to start working the I.O. So the first thing is to set our fans onto the radiator, making sure all the cables are coming out at the back. Then we can go ahead and get the fans secured into place using the long radiator screws. Then we can go ahead and set our top radiator bracket onto the radiator. And then we've got some shorter radiator screws and washers to secure it into place. Then we can go ahead and insert our AIO on a bracket into the case. And then we'll slide it all the way to the front and secure things into place with the two screws at the top. I'm just going to go ahead and pass the cables coming from the fans through to the back. Okay, just before we install our cooler, we need to go ahead and remove this cover. It's magnetically attached. The other important thing to mention, if you're using this cooler for the first time, you'll find some thermal paste pre-applied to the back. This cooler has been used before, so I'm going to have to apply my own. So we'll go ahead and add a pea-sized amount of thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. And then we can go ahead and line our water block up with the bracket. There we go. And then we've got some thumb screws to go on each corner. And then we'll go ahead and clip our cover back on again. And we'll route these cables coming from the cover through to the back of the case. I've also just gone ahead and run our tube through the 24 pin cable as well, keeping them nice and tidy. So coming from our cover for our AIO, we've got a USB cable, so we'll bring it through the bottom. We've got two USB 2.0 headers down at the bottom here, so I'm just going to plug into one of them. The other cable coming from our pump is this other USB connector, so we're going to plug it into the hub that comes with our AIO. On the other side of the hub, we've got three fan connectors, so I'm going to go ahead and plug the three fans on our radiator into here. The other cable coming from our hub is a 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connector, so I'm going to go ahead and route that down to the bottom of the case. Then, right beside the other ARGB header we plugged in earlier on, I'm going to go ahead and plug this one in. The last thing to plug into our hub is we're going to need to power it, so we've got a SATA cable coming from our power supply, and we'll go ahead and get it plugged in. So that's our AIO all connected up. It's important to remember that our case also has a SATA cable which needs power, so I'm going to plug one of the other SATA connectors from the same power cable into it. We're now ready to go ahead and connect our Lee and Lee Uni fans up together, so these just connect together, pushing them in at the side, like that. So that's all three of them connected. Then into each group of fans, we need to put a little connector on. Coming from each of these, we've got two connectors which we're going to plug into our hub once we've got the fans installed in the case. Okay, we'll go ahead and set our fans onto the bracket. Turn our bracket over. Then we can go ahead and slide our bottom fan bracket into place and then we'll secure it into place with a thumb screw. And then we'll pass the cables coming from our fans through to the back. We can go ahead and pass the cables from our rear fan through to the back of the case. And then go ahead and get it secured into place. Then we can go ahead and slide our front fans into place. Bring the cables through first of all. Slide the fans in and then we'll pass the cables through to the back. And then we'll go ahead and get our fans secured into place. Okay, we now need to get our fans plugged into our Lian Li Uni fan controller. So we've got two cables coming from each fan. One is a four pin PWM connector, so we're gonna plug this one into channel one, and the other is an ARGB connector, again, also into channel one. We've got the two cables coming from our rear fan. We'll go ahead and plug these into channel number two. And then just before I plug our third set of fans in, it is quite tight, I'm not going to be able to show you the other connectors. Coming from the end of our hub, we've got a SATA cable, we're going to need to plug into a SATA power cable. We've got a USB 2.0 header, we're going to bring that through to the front of the case and plug it into our motherboard's other USB 2.0 header. And then we've got this splitter cable. Um, one end of it is for PWM, so it's going to plug into one of the fan headers in our motherboard and the other is for ARGB, and that's if you want to sync this directly using your motherboard. 
Leon Lee's L Connect software is much better, so I'm not going to worry about plugging this one in. I'm just going to plug in the PWM fan connector. But before I do that, we'll go ahead and get the third set of fans plugged in. We'll go ahead and plug the SATA cable into a SATA cable coming from our power supply. And then we'll route the other two cables through to the front. Okay, down the bottom of the case we've got another USB 2.0 header, so we'll go ahead and plug the cable in. And then pull the excess cable through to the back. And then we'll go ahead and plug into the PWM fan connector down at the bottom. Okay, that's everything connected up. Last thing to do is some cable management. Importantly, we have some Velcro straps here and a cable management channel down the middle, which should hopefully make this a little bit easier. Okay, that's the build complete. We've now reached the moment of truth where we need to flip the power switch and see what happens. Importantly, I have loaded a Windows 11 bootable USB drive into the back of the PC. If you don't know how to make one of those, I've done a video on it and you'll find a link to that in the description. Okay, here it goes. Okay, so that's good. We can hear the liquid moving in the I.O. and we've got our fans spinning. So we just need to keep an eye on the screen and see what happens. So that's a good sign, we've got the ROG logo appearing. And what we're looking for next is the Windows installation screen to appear if it's found the bootable USB drive that we plugged into the back of the computer. So there we go, we're through to the Windows installation screen. I'm now going to show you how to install Windows 11, but to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to flip over to the screen mode. Okay, over the next lot of screens, I'm going to pick the options that are relevant to me. You should pick, obviously, the ones that are relevant to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. And then I'm going to click on Install Now. If you've got a Windows product key, go ahead and enter it in the box. If you don't, click I don't have a product key. Select the version of Windows you're going to get a product key for. I'll select Windows 11 Pro, click Next. We're going to accept the license terms, Next. We're going to go for a custom install. We've only got one drive installed, so we're going to select it and click on Next. And again, this next step will take a little bit of time, so I'll go ahead and skip through it. Okay, I'm from the United Kingdom. I'm going to go ahead and click on Yes, and Yes again. I'm going to skip a secondary keyboard. It's asking us to name our device and click on Next. I'm going to set the PC up for personal use, click Next. So it's asking me to sign in with my Microsoft ID. This isn't going to be a PC that I'm going to be keeping, so I'm going to go for Sign in Options and go for an offline account. And then I'm going to go Skip for now. And it's going to ask me to enter my name, click Next. And then I'm going to have to make a password. I'm then going to have to set up three security questions. So I'm going to go ahead and let App choose my location, click Accept. Yes to find my device. Just the required data, accept. No. 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 Okay, so that's Windows 11 installed. We're getting a pop-up about downloading the Armoury Crate and LAN driver. So we should go ahead and do this. We'll click on Yes. Okay, we're going to have to accept the terms by clicking I Agree. And Accept. I'm just going to cancel this. Okay, so this is in the dashboard. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and get our drivers. So we go over to the tools, and we're on the drivers tab, so it will have found some drivers for us. So I'm going to go ahead and click on download and install. Click yes, private networks, and we're going to click allow access. And this is one of the nice things about the Zeus motherboard. You just need to come here and it will download and install the drivers for you, rather than having to go to the websites and find the individual drivers. So it really simplifies the installation process. Okay, we're going to need to go ahead and restart our computer, so we'll do that now. There's one more driver for us to get, so we're going to need to head over to NVIDIA's website. 
I've already pre-filled in all the options and I'm gonna click on search. I'm gonna click on download and download a game. I'm then gonna click on open file, click yes, okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install the driver, click agree and continue, and we'll go for an express installation, click next. Okay, that's the graphics card drivers installed. We can click on close. Next thing I want to do is get Windows fully up to date. I would normally start with this, but the Armory crate popped up, so I decided to go ahead with drivers first of all. So we can go ahead and click on Windows Update. So what Windows has done is find a whole load of updates, so we're going to go ahead and click on Download Now. So what's going to happen is it's going to install them. We may well need to restart our computer a number of times, but we're going to keep coming back here and checking for more updates, and it's only once there's no more updates available that we're going to proceed. Okay, so whenever I click on check for updates, there's no further updates available. So we can go ahead and close this down. The next thing I want to do is head over to our motherboards page and we're down on the BIOS tab. So the latest version of the BIOS is from the 3rd of the 12th, 2021. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this. Then if we go to our downloads folder and we're gonna extract the file. And this is actually our BIOS file, so I'm going to copy it. And I've plugged an external USB drive into the computer. We'll go ahead and click on it and then paste the file here. Okay, next thing we want to do is head over to the BIOS. So we click on the Windows icon, click on the power, and click on restart. What we're going to do, we're going to restart our computer. Whenever the screen goes blank, we're going to start pressing the delete key, and that will take us into the BIOS. So I'm going to start pressing the delete key now. Okay, that's us into the BIOS, and what I can see is the version that we have from the 22nd of October, there's actually a later version on the USB drive, so we're going to go ahead and update it. In general, I wouldn't recommend updating your BIOS unless you're having problems with your computer or you need the new features that the new version offers. So to go ahead and update it, we'll click on Tool, click on the Flash 3 utility. We need to find our BIOS file, it's on our USB drive. And there's the file here, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And um, we don't have BitLocker enabled, so I'm going to go ahead and click yes. And we want to read the file, yes, and yes. So what's really important is that we don't lose power in our PC during the BIOS update, because if that happens, there's a risk of our motherboard being bricked. Okay, that's the BIOS update. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Okay, so we can, now you can see our BIOS has been updated to the latest version. Okay, so if we go ahead and click on the easy mode, um, we can see we've got our two sticks of RAM which are currently running at 4800 megahertz. I'm gonna go ahead and enable the XMP profile. And that gets us up to 5200 megahertz. The next thing I want to do is enable the resizable bar by clicking on. And then the final thing I want to do is take a look at our fans. So we at the moment have plugged our Lian Li fans into chassis fan header number four. It's not actually detecting a fan speed from them, and I have found this is a bit of an issue previously with some of the Lian Li uni fans when you plug them directly into the controller. Um, we'll click on Q fan control, click on chassis fan header number four, and at the moment it's set to auto detect, and it's running in the standard fan profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit from here, I'm going to save the changes we've made and exit and click OK. OK, that's us back into Windows. The first thing I want to do is check the settings we have enabled have been turned on. So we right click on the Windows icon, click on Task Manager. We're going to click on More Details, Performance and Memory. We can see our RAM is currently running at 5200 megahertz. If we go down to the bottom and click on the NVIDIA settings, Click Agree and Continue, and then we're going to click on System Information, and we can see Resizable Bar has been enabled. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and download Leon Lee's L Connect software. So we head over to their page and click on Download L Connect. We can go ahead and click on Open File, and then we've got the choice of installing L Connect 1 or 2. I'm going to go for 2. Click Extract All, Extract and then we'll click on the setup file. We're gonna to need to click on more info 
and run anyway. And click yes. English. Next. Next. Install. And we'll click on finish to run L Connect 2. Okay, so we've got Leon Lee SL fans installed, so we'll click on the SL fans. So what we can do is we can select the first group of fans. We can go ahead and pick whatever effect we want. I don't want to change them to a static white, so I'm going to click static white and click on OK. We're going to select all four fans in the group. And what I'm going to do is select the white from over here and paint all four white. And then I just want to apply this to all groups of fans. So I'm going to go ahead and click on apply to all. And what you'll notice now that all the fans in our case have changed to white. At the moment, our fans are set to PWM mode. If we want to change the speed, we can go into here and change it as well. I'm just going to leave it on PWM mode at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. The next thing I want to do is head over to the armory crate. And we're going to go ahead up to the devices and click on our cooler. So you've probably already noticed from the amount of background noise that the fans in our PC are running incredibly loud. I've checked which fans it is and it's the fans on the AIO rather than any of our case fans. So looking through the software here, there is no good reason why if any of the fan curves were behaving as they're showing here, that the fans would be running so loud. How I actually fixed the problem was the micro USB cable going into the fan hub. I unplugged it and then plugged it back in again and everything seemed to work as it should and in a minute you'll notice the noise disappears. So at the moment we have a fan that you've seen whenever I took the cover off the AIO and we can see the fan curve that it's running on. So it's quite a noisy fan so it's better not to have it coming on until the CPU is heating up quite hot and then it ramps up quite quickly so that looks fine to me. The pump is running off this curve here, just the default curve again. I'm not going to go ahead and adjust that for now. And our AIO controller, which is the fans on our radiator, are running off this fan curve. It's just the default fan curve. So I'm going to leave them as they are for now and then do some thermal testing and make some adjustments later on if needed. The next thing I want to do is head over and take a look at our display. So at the moment on the screen, you can see the animation. If I want to change that, I can. I can go ahead and click on this one, click Apply. And then when you look at the screen, you'll notice it has changed. You can change it to this one, give you a look at that, click Apply. And we've also got options up here where we can change what goes on it. We can have the hardware monitor. So if we want, we can have a single temperature. So at the moment, we can put the CPU temperature up on the screen, click Apply. And you'll see it now shows the CPU temperature. There's the option to have multiple information, so we can go for quad info. It'll put a whole variety of stuff up here and click apply. Okay, the other thing we can do is upload a custom image. So I'm going to click on the image. I'm going to click on upload file. And I have saved a picture um, of my logo in the picture, so we'll click on open. We just need to resize it, so we'll just maximize this out and then click on save, and then we'll click on apply. And then we've now got my logo in the center of the screen. The next thing I want to do is change some of the lighting. So we click on the Aura Sync. So at the moment, everything is syncing. So I'm gonna click on the Aura Effects. So I've gone ahead and taken the front mesh panel off to give you a look at our graphics card. And we've also got a blue lighting strip along the front of the case. So everything's currently set to rainbow. Um, obviously the blue lighting is coming from the case lighting at the moment. So if I want to get a static color, I'm going to click on static. And then going to select white by typing in 255 in each of these boxes. And then clicking OK. And what we can now see is the lighting on the graphics card has turned to white. And if I go back into the case, the lighting on the motherboard's IO shield has also turned it to white. So I'm just going to need to press mode on the case to get the lighting to change. And there we go, we've got it set to sync with motherboard. I'm just going to try and change the lighting again to see if that will change. 
So if I go to the color and pick red, so you can see now the lighting on the front of the case is changing with our motherboard. So that's how it works. You keep pressing the mode button and it cycles through the different effects. And it's the eighth press that gets you to sync with whatever the motherboard is currently set to. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back to white. So that's the build fully set up. I think it looks absolutely stunning and it's running great. Um, I really enjoyed building in this case. In particular, it was doing something completely different with the upright GPU. And it was really nice adding the front mesh panel onto this case as well. There's a whole variety of different configurations that you can do in this case. What I'm planning to do now is I'm gonna do a full case review but I'm also going to do the best cooling configuration for this case. So I'm going to be testing a whole variety of different fan configurations, different I.O. placement, and I'm even going to put an air cooler into the case as well. So if you're thinking of building in this case, it'll give you an idea of how you want to build in it, because you might not want to follow this guide exactly. You might want to do it with some modifications. So as well as getting all the noise and temperature results, you're also going to get a, get a look at all the different builds that I put together. So it's going to give you an idea of what looks great as well. And once I've made those videos, you'll find a link to them in the description. So hopefully you find this video useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.